Hi guys, this is Arif from TechShare. Today I'm going to show you how could you create um, Sitecore forms in XM Cloud. So very recently, um, Sitecore introduced this um, XM Cloud forms. Um, what it's going to look like is this. Let me show you quickly. Um, hold on. Alrighty. Um, one second, yes. So, um, <clears throat> if you go to the XM Cloud Tools menu, which is basically the launch board of typical, you know, um, Sitecore XM or XP, then you would see there is a new app called Forms. And that form basically um, you could use that uh, you know in in XM Cloud because this is in a separate application. This is a front end uh, you know, as a service kind of uh, uh, organization from Sitecore. So basically, basically you can go there, you can create your form, and then you can plug in that form to your uh, to your uh, rendering host through the um your um cm ca through the cm you could basically um create a component create a component and you can plug in that uh, component to your form and you can publish that one and literally you will get that on in your rendering host or uh, your website <clears throat> so what i'll do today is quickly i'll show you how could you create a very basic form but let me first give you some ideas like what is this form so when you go to the form app then it's going to look like this one so I have already created a couple of forms. Um, so you can see here, there are two tabs here. One is forms, another one is webhooks. So they are very important because the concept here is um, Sitecore doesn't store any data. So what it will do is once you submit the form, uh, you also need to have your webhook configured here. And what will happen is Sitecore push the data to your endpoint um, and then you will get the data, you will store it and you will do whatever you need to do. And through the rendering host, if you want to present that data somewhere, then you can obviously create your middleware API with basically connect and basically grab that form for you, um, data for you. So that's how you basically re utilize that um, data later on. Um, you can also utilize Sitecore Connect to you know get the data through this webhook and then um, you can send that data to your uh, anywhere basically because Sitecore Connect has a lot of different connection point um so very real quick I'll, what i'll do is i'll create a form for you guys and i'll show you so this is our demo form very quick and um, first of all what you need to do is you need to set a layout for that and um, there are different options for you um so you can create full with layout half with layout and all those different options so for a very basic kind of you know um demo here what i'll do is i'll put this uh full with layout here and here there is a box so what you can do is when you click that and then you have all those different controls that you could potentially add here you could add all those different options um or what you could do you could basically go this items tab here uh, in your left and you can drag any of this button or any of these form elements that you want to add so for example what i could do i could drag a short text uh, say let's say it is a name then um, let me add another one maybe email address so I'm putting the name so there are two options um, you can set a name as well because this is also very important why it is also important I'll tell you so this is my name field so this is the name of this field and um, there is a label as well so you can say you can you can say this is an email and you can also put a placeholder things like that um, this name is also very important because when you configure your webhook then you also expect that data to be passed to your uh, endpoint right through the webhook so then you can basically create a contract from your side using this name um, accordingly and then that would be easier for you to manage um, the object um, 
what I mean by that, I'll show you uh, later on. But uh, <clears throat> so what I'm here, I have done here is let me reorganize this form. So there is a simple basic form name, email address, and say um, I am also going to add another field called um, address, and I'm also name this field as address. And this one label is address. Now there is a submit form. What else you could do? See here, there is an add page button that basically allow you to create another page of your form. So if you have, um, if you ever, you know, have a requirement to add multi uh, pages forms, then you could basically add this, you know, through this add button. And that is very easy. I'll probably show you that one. So add page then it will allow see here there is a next button automatically added and the previous button is not here and the next final step the submit button is here and there is a back button so this way site code will basically allow you and does everything for you basically in terms of your um, you know going back and forth and uh, and then you can site code will assume since you have three fields here so it will also add three different placeholders so that you can add it or you can drag and drop here or you know different kind of field that you want to utilize here for now let me delete this space so i have um this um sort of uh, let me delete this one and then what i'll do is so i have three field and then the submit button what i'll do is i'll add it from here so there is the action button um, so what I'll do, I'll add it here. Let me drag and drop here, right? So that's all. So now the next step is obviously once you do everything, the form, so you can basically save, um, you can, um, do other thing like, for example, let me do save and active. Um, you also need to set up the webhook. Um, so that's why it says that please set up the webhook. Now here, this form that you've just created is a demo form, right? And then there is an ID which is also important. We'll, uh, we'll show you how we can plug in this form to your um, um, expense editor later on. But important, you need to have a webhook. So I already have created two webhook. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just simply add any of this and I'll show you how basically it goes there and how you configure that on. So they're, they're very easy. Um, so I guess um, that's all. So you have the submit button, save and exit. Now it says that, are you going to preview this one? So okay, let's do the preview here. So in the preview, you can see here, uh, you can basically put the name, address, and then you can press the submit button. Then this is very important because now you will see here that it has this uh, name, email address. So this is basically the data, JSON data that it is going to send you to your endpoint. And importantly, see here, um, this name, since we added those field name as very readable name, email address, and that's why you get it. And this is important because when you will create your contract to your um, uh, endpoint site, when you will add this middleware, sorry, yeah, this webhook endpoint, then you can basically create your object based on this naming. And there is extra test room and so obviously it's a test submit. And you can basically submit it. And then once you submit, then it will basically send the data to your, um, so I already have sort of, uh, you know, um, in point I have created here, a very basic web API. And um, see here, this is this is basically the handler that I have prepared. And I, during that, uh, you know, um, webhook, creation process i actually have used this one um so uh, let me uh quickly um let me see what is the name of this okay hold on let me run this one i already have um a so this application is running localhost um 44349 and i already have configured a uh, tunnel n0 tunnel so it basically listen this uh, app that I will have running at this moment and it will expose this in point. So if I copy this in point and if I actually hit it, so that will basically tell you whether my NG rock is working correctly or not. So I can see here it is actually working. The other thing now I'll show you guys uh, is uh, let me let me save and exit this one and then I'll show you quickly the webhook and then probably um, you will understand how that basically 
connects to this um, you know data to your uh, endpoint through the webhook now in the webhook side so this demo form is there it is still inactive which is very important so i can basically create this active but before that let me quickly go to the settings and see if we i already have a webhook configured yes we did before which is site could connect submit uh, that i have created but in the site could connect submit if i click the, this one then you can see here i basically have uh this in point here um and this in point is nothing but that um that sort of you know uh same in point that i have created here so if i go um sorry um this is not the item this is the item so i have this one uh so basically i did a mistake so let me go back one more time here sorry um what is that form here now in the form uh let me change this um webhook to my um my other one uh, so in the settings you have this um, test submit save and exit and this in webhook is basically pointing to my my this in point through this tunnel this one all right now this demo form is inactive let me go and quickly activate this one so this this demo form is active means you can now basically send um sort of a you know um uh you can use this webhook and you can use this form basically so let me use this form demo form and, and see how could we basically do that so now i already have a site running um so the site running in my xm cloud let me bring that site quickly in this space um now here i my way my site is running here so let me go and quickly uh open my um home page actually here right so let me go to the content editor let me open the form one more time let me go to the content editor because this form app is also important to um to open and copy that uh, id that you have so what i'll do is in the demo form settings i'll copy this form id now here in my uh, xm cloud project i already have running on project um I already have a project setup and i also have this project running in my um in my rendering host which is basically running in my local connected to this site which is this um so you can see already a form here but that form is not the form that you have created it's a different form but uh, what i will do is i'll create another form underneath that one and i'll show you guys how could you do that so in their home page uh we'll go and the easiest option for us is to go to the experience editor which we will do now and uh, through the experience editor what we'll do is let's just wait for this experience editor to load it will take maybe some time uh but once it will load uh, okay operation timeout very easy um just need to refresh it in that case in my case what happens is my internet connection is not that good today um because of the nbn issue here let's just do it for a couple of refresh now we can see it is loading now here that form that i have created earlier it says that this component is missing that is right because i did not publish my rendering host um yet so it is my rendering host is running in my local uh as well so if you see this one is running localhost so i basically need to push all those changes to to my um i am using versal so i need that everything to be published to the versal so that you can also see this this form here in experience later because it connects to the versal through the rendering host item but we don't need to worry about that one so what we can do is in order to connect or add another form we need to use this byoc wrapper which is basically bring your own component 
Um, so what we need to do, we need to add this one here. And we already have copied this sort of, uh, you know, form ID and you need to use this edit component properties. And once you do that, um, well, I have some uh, um, sort of thing, but anyway, so this component name, so you need to have, this is a site code form, this is a convention you need to use. And then here you can say form ID equal to this. So this is a convention you have to follow. So you have to use the site code form, then your query string option form ID equal to the ID that you have just copied for your new form. That's all you need to do. And okay, press okay button and save it here. So once you save that, um, hold on, it is actually refreshing, it takes some time. interestingly um, this uh, I don't see this anyway uh, but let me verify hope oh, I am actually adding everything correct let me just see let me go presentation details real quick and here I have this view voice wrapper the one so this site could form then form ID I guess we are actually using the right way so here um this one we already have added this BYOC wrapper for my ID. So I guess everything is good. Save this one. Now what I'll do is um I'll I'll refresh my front end because this front end actually connects to my preview endpoint of this same site. So if I now refresh this one, so I'm expecting another form uh, like the one that you have created before should appear at the bottom and that is right sorry not bottom on the first i can see here so i can see the name email address and submit button so name i'll say let me arif and then some address and then if i submit but press the submit button then you can see here the call i have got here through the webhook and there is a data which is basically coming name arif and address accordingly and now you, what you need to do is you just need to save it right so yeah submit it successfully um so accordingly you can do any sort of form operation through this one now the multi-step form if you have created here then you'll see this button and you can basically go first page second page and accordingly fill the form and submit it so that's the very basic way of creating or configuring a site code form as a sort of front end as a service way through your BYOC wrapper component that is coming as a part of um, so now well I mean you it, the very interesting part is this form control is not controlled by you right because we haven't added any form component or anything here so it comes automatically through your um, definition or you can say that rendering that we have created in our um, in content editor and experience editor and then it actually comes straight away from there as a sort of data and site code JSS SDK does the rest. So one important point here is you have to use the latest site code SDK JSS SDK which is basically 21.6. So prior to that 21.6 we will not be able to get this support, this form support. So obviously you need to do that. How you are going to upgrade your uh, old site code JSS to 21.6? Well that's a uh, different discussion probably you will uh, keep an eye in my channel I'll also post that on very soon maybe next week the other thing I would like to show you guys probably another week is how we are going to send the data to Sitecore connect and from there how could you pass that data to connect and add the you know, different workflows in there different connection points that site could connect out of the box support and do some magic there Probably that would be another discussion, but for now, if you like this video, then just give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe my channel and I will keep posting other interesting videos uh, whenever I will get some opportunity. Till then, bye-bye. And if you have any questions, anything, just put it in the comments. See you very soon. Bye.